It's the N to the E to the T, L to the I to the N to the K. What does that spell? News. I don't think so. No? No. News. <laughs> Qualcomm has decided to manufacture their next chip, the Snapdragon 820, with Samsung. Usually, Qualcomm partners with Taiwan Semiconductor's Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. This time around, they've gone ahead with Samsung because of the thinner 14 nanometer wiring instead of the 20 nanometer transistors. This would mean smaller chips that are cheaper to make and have better battery performance. This is interesting to hear since Samsung opted to go with their own chip instead of a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip in their recent S6 lineup, but hey, Better battery performance? Yes, please. Researchers from Oregon State University have come up with a new technology called WIFO. WIFO has the capability to increase Wi-Fi bandwidth up to 10 times. Basically, the technology involves LEDs that create a cone of invisible light about one meter square in which the data can be received. Essentially, it would help with bandwidth congested locations like a coffee shop or airport terminal. The LEDs are cheap to make and would be easily integrated into existing Wi-Fi systems through USB. WIFO is still a prototype, but they have already secured a provisional patent and are looking for sponsorships. And in hardware news, MSI is planning to show off a new adapter card for motherboards at Computex. The new adding card is their M.2 to Turbo Mini SAS card. Basically, it turns the M.2 slot on a X99 motherboard into a SFF. 8639 connector. More details about the card and what motherboards it may be bundled with will come in June during Computex. It's time for beep, 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 beep. YouTube's Data API version 2 will be replaced by version 3, and this means that some older devices will not be able to use their YouTube app without some sort of upgrade. For the time being, it's just old iPhone, iPad, and iPod devices running anything older than iOS 6. And there have been a few reports that some Google devices are having the same issue. MIT graduates have invented Nailo, a thumbnail-sized wearable trackpad you put on the back of your thumbnail. While it's not the first time we've seen a pint-sized wireless pointing device, the device Developers at Nello hope to make it even slimmer and more compact. And Google has decided to take their street view to lakes. Well, one really specific lake in particular, Loch Ness. That's right, you can now use Google Maps Street View to explore Loch Ness. Who knows what Google will do next? Maybe they'll have a street view of the Himalayas so we can look for a real life Yeti. Exclamation marks! NCIX is turning 19 years old soon. Wow, 19 years old. That's like the legal agent in Canada to like do a bunch of legal stuff. Anyways, like NCIX on Facebook because a little birdie tells me that there might be some sort of sweet steaks that starts sometime soon. Soon as in like tomorrow or the day after that. So yeah, like us on Facebook. If you want to be in the nose, be in the nose. All right, that's it for Netlink Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take the next few days off, dive into the Loch Ness Street View Maps page, and try to find Nessie, the ever-elusive monster of the Loch Ness. Fun fact, BC's very own Ogopogo Lake Monster is Nessie's cousin. I'm just full of useless facts. Just, just full of them.